Can you all hear me? <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Let's begin with the dua. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Fa'awuzu billahi min shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri. Wahlun uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbana zidna ilma. Rabbana zidna ilma. Rabbana zidna ilma. Allahumma faqihna fi al-deen. Allahumma faqihna. الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن, ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها آمين يا رب <تصفيق> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are all of you? I pray that all of you are well. Jazakumullahu khairan coming out for, to attending the lesson on a Sunday. Uh, on the weekends, I generally say it's not an easy one. But mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and bless your time and bless your families uh, and give you all the ability to learn the Quran in the way that it is meant to be. Uh, uh, re to be read and understood and, in, and allow you to implement the learning of the Quran in your lives. I mean, um, today's topic is going to be an interesting one. <clears throat> uh, you know, make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends for you to learn, that you learn and you take home with you. And, uh, and each one of us is going to aspire to better the level that we are on. Okay, we can't reach to the, you know, if you, if I'm standing on level one, I don't expect to be, I don't expect, I, I shouldn't be expected to be on level 100 in one go. Uh, we'll take little steps towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, bismillah. So it's going to be the Islamic dress code. We're going to looking, we're going to be looking into the Islamic dress code. Um, the surah that corresponds to it is Surah Al-A'raf. It's in Juz 8. Juz eight. And that is uh, ayah number 26 and 27. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya, ya bani Adam, O children of Adam, qad anzalna, indeed we have sent down alaykum onto you libas. And libas is, uh, the word is clothing, isn't it? it in most languages, it, it is the same. Yuwari sawatikum warisha. So what does the clothing do? It conceals you. And it is going to be a fine adornment. And the garment of righteousness is that is the best. And these are from the proofs or signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that people can remember. So that people can follow the truth. So that people can leave the falsehood. So we're going to we're going to delve into what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in detail. So first, before we start that, there are some terminologies that we need to know. Now, modesty, what does modesty mean in Islam? Modest, you know, because we use the word modesty with clothing, with the behavior. What does it mean? A humble, unpretentious, unpretentious meaning you don't want to show it off. You're not doing it to impress someone. So your appearance or your way of talking or your way of walking is not to impress another person, but you're just doing it because that's you. Okay, so your mannerism or your appearance does not is not to impress another person. Hijab, a term often used to used to mean scarf or an outer garment, but actually in, in Arabic it means a cover or screen. Okay, so we need to be clear about it. Uh, we use it, we intermingle the stuff. But in Arabic, hijab only means a screen, a cover. We use it for scarf, but that's not the, the right meaning. Then khimar. Khimar is the word that we're going to learn today. Um, a scarf that covers the head, the shoulders, and the chest of a woman. That's a khimar. You know, normally what we say the dupatta that we say, or the, the long scarf that we have, or the, the wider scarf that we have, that's khimar. Something that's going to cover the head, the shoulder, and the chest of a woman woman jilbab now you must have come across the word abaya yeah now jilbab is an outer garment one piece or two pieces 
that covers the entire body except the face and hands. So the abaya does the same. The difference between jilbab and abaya is abaya sometimes can be open. Jilbab is going to be closed from the front. Niqab, all of you know, which is a face veil. So now knowing all these words, let's proceed. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying? Oh, children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing. Allah has sent us clothing as a blessing. So there are two interpretations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to wear the clothes. Yeah, clothing ourselves is actually fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, be happy. Alhamdulillah, you all are dressed well in the most appropriate way. So you didn't know about it. Now you make the intention and alhamdulillah, Allah is going to reward you. Every time you wear decent clothes, modest clothes, you're going to be rewarded. And then what is that? the other interpretation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have sent down the means of your clothing from above. What does it mean by means of clothing? Let's look into it. Now, clothing meaning, you know, the, the, the material that we use, the cotton, the silk, the wool, everything comes from where? They are plants, isn't it? And they, are de and they grow on earth and they all depend on the rain. Where does the rain come from? Directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not any other, but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending us the resources for us to be able to wear the clothing. Yeah. So everything that is worn is libas in Arabic language. Okay. And that can be all sorts of outfits, all possible outfits that you can think of. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us to wear the, the clothes. The, the, to wear the clothing is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I was just thinking, you know, there are people who call themselves naturists. You know, I wish people couldn't, you know, some of us can go and speak to them. Because naturists, they say that we're naturists and and they don't wear any clothes. They say we were born without clothes and hence we are going to live all our lives without clothes, subhanAllah. So they're totally not knowing what to do and they're totally not aware of Allah's commands. And what does it, the clothing do? It conceals what should be concealed and as a fine adornment. Risha means an adornment. Risha means feathers of a bird. But in this ayah, it gives the meaning, adornment. And don't we look beautiful with the clothes? It, I don't think anybody will say otherwise. And look at this, the comparison between the two birds. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these days people like to have pets and they tend to buy uh, hairless cats, for example. And I feel that's wrong. They, of course, that's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've genetically modified them so that they don't have any hairs. And yet the owner is happy that they're keeping a pet. But Look at the beauty between the two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, all the feathers, they make it beautiful. So a bird without, without the feathers is not looking very beautiful. And hence the same, the same implies to the human being. So what is the purpose of the clothing? To cover the body, to conceal what should not be revealed in public and to beautify the body so that the person looks better. So Islam is not, is not all for a person should look ugly, yeah? It's not that, you know, uh, and again, bear in mind, people say everything is haram in Islam. That's wrong. M mostly everything is halal, except few things that has been proven to be haram. Most of the things are halal in Islam. Okay. So a Muslim is allowed to wear whichever clothes he wishes, as long as they are modest. So they're covering the body free from impurities. So they don't have any impurities that the, the person cannot pray uh, with with it on them and not made from for, forbidden materials so if you have um for example you have clothing made out of you know for example you have a leather jacket and that was made from the the the, le the skin of the pig then of course you that's not going to be allowed but otherwise leather of halal animals that's perfectly fine and even um you know, like they say, for all the carnivores and all the beasts, for example, people wear um, a leopard, a leopard skin or snake or, uh, or snake skin, um, you know, the shawls or the jackets or the, the, the shoes, the shoes, I've, I've seen the shoes more common, that's not allowed. You should not, you should avoid it. Um, and then what should your clothing be within the guidelines laid out by the Quran and the Sunnah. So everything is allowed. There's only certain things that are not allowed. Alhamdulillah. 
We're going to look into another word, aura, right, with the ayn, okay, aura, body parts which must be covered from others. So aura is the word that you're going to remember today. Aura means the parts of our body which should be covered from others. Let's look into the aura of a male. Aura of a male is everything from the navel to the knee. And subhanAllah, you will see that these footballers these days, you go to the gym and people are wearing shorts or they're going swimming, shorts. That's, that's, that's not allowed. It's haram, not, not allowed at all. You need to have it longer, okay? Because you're not meant to expose to anyone. The man should not expose to anyone from the navel to the knee, okay? So either they wear something inside uh, and that covers their knee. And look at this. This shorts, especially it's summer coming up, shorts not allowed. Why? Because the knees are exposed. These days, ripped jeans, subhanAllah, again not allowed. Why? Because the thighs are being exposed. So anything from the navel to the knee should not be exposed. Again, this, these type of, uh, the, it's too tight. Even for a male, it's not allowed. Okay, so the aura is comfortable, loose clothing. And what is the aura? Navel to the knee. So that's for a male. There's another thing, if you can, please, if you have brothers and you have sons, ask them to make sure when they're praying and there's such a common sight because these days people wear t-shirts that are short and when they're bending down for rukuah and you can see their backside. And that is, that invalidates the salah. So, you know, they have to be careful and to make sure that they have extra long clothing. The thobe they wear is much better. They should be very, very careful. Um, that they don't expose their aura. Okay, alhamdulillah. So what is the what is the guideline said, said for us? That uh, proper clothing for males should be the least, the minimum requirement is, meaning a person is extremely poor, they don't have anything, they don't have any means of clothing, the minimum they should cover is navel to knee. Not They cannot expose this to anyone, okay? Shouldn't be see-through, look at that, that for male as well, shouldn't be tight. These are the three conditions for um, the clothing of a male. For females, shouldn't be transparent, shouldn't be tight, shouldn't be short. Okay, we we'll look into the female clothing a bit more. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ And the garment of righteousness, that is the best. So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the clothing. And then now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, yes, you have your clothing, you're all free to wear. In the, in, the, in the means that you are set, the boundaries that you've been set, you by, show, by all means wear the clothing that we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you. But the, gar the garment of righteousness is the best. Meaning, in, in tangible sense, the righteousness is, um, righteousness is the clothing of a person's soul. Because, you know, we all are too much involved in looking after what our bodies need. Yeah, We're hungry. Then we feed the human body. Then we, we desire certain things. I wish to eat this and I wish to go this place, that place. We're looking into fit, feeding into the needs of our body. But do we even look into our soul? We don't do that. We don't look into the needs of the soul. And hence, you know, uh, you see that there is so much, so many people suffering from depression. So many people suffering. Why? Because their soul is ill. Their soul is ill. And, and why? Because you didn't feed the soul. The, the, the feeding of the soul was through the remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't do that. We don't remember Allah. We do everything. We do everything to beautify our body, to look after the needs of our body. We're going to go to the gym. We're going to maintain this. We're going to go in, on a healthy diet. Everything to do with the body. But no attention, no heed to the soul. And the soul slowly and surely gets damaged. How does it get damaged? By doing evil things. I mean, every time you're jealous, every time you do something uh, which is uh, displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a, a part of your soul gets hurt. So what is Allah saying? So we need to beautify our character. We need to have haya. Haya means modesty. We need to be shy and there is no harm. You know, the day, the day and age we live in, people say, oh, shyness is not a thing. No, in Islam, shyness is a thing. You need to be shy. You, it is a part of Iman to be shy. And it's not, it's not good to be, you know, um, there's a difference between confidence and, and haya. Confidence 
meaning that you you want what you want to say you say in the best way possible but don't involve yourself into vain talk or vulgar speech that is if if someone is left right center swearing then you don't have any haya you don't have any shyness but if you are putting your point across through without swearing in an in a firm way that's perfectly fine so we need to beautify a character by getting the traits of haya shyness in ourselves doing good fearing allah having the iman in our heart, in our heart and that is going to be the garment of our righteousness an intangible address that fulfills the conditions of taqwa shows a strong belief in the akhirah yeah so when a person looks at you i think you know what i think i've jumbled it up i should have said that intangible and the, the soul is intangible you can't see it and tangible i beg your pardon i'll correct it later and tangible is something that you can see so um the dress so when you when someone looks at you they know straight away that you have a strong connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your clothing depict depict that you fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time uh, in looking at your clothing you know every time you, you you put on a garment you are asking yourself is allah going to be pleased with what i wear am i going to be rewarded in the hereafter or am i just going to have uh, you know a few friends who only care about me because i am doing good and 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 they are going to be happy with what i wear so libas taqwa mean a person worries about his hereafter and his clothes are not too short not transparent and neither are tight so you are not trying to fit into the society instead you are trying to fit in to the happiness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you all the time asking yourself you having the taqwa the consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and that depicts in your clothing dhalika min ayatihi these are from the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what are the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the clothing the clothing the way you you behave are all uh, you know how you you carry your clothing are the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and the from these signs you are going to uh, leave the falsehood and follow the truth okay so now what is the lesson we learn that if you dress up in a way that allah wants you to then you are into in a, you are in obedience with allah and that is an act of worship subhanallah you know i i often think how great is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not want to leave any opportunity for us to 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 take goodness yeah allah wants to give us jannah we are you know giving into our desires into the fake fake marketing people have been doing the photoshopping they're doing in the magazines to make the celebrities look beautiful you know and the fake standards that we have of beauty that we just forget what has allah asked us to do and we focus on or on what the media is telling us to do instead if we take you know take take a time take some time lean back we and just sit back and relax and think what does allah want from me because in the end i have to go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these people who i follow these people who are the trend setters are they going to come and rescue me if i were to drop dead are these people are these people going to uh, you know bring me back from the from the dead or they're just going to rush and put me in the grave yeah so you have to ask yourself these questions and then and be happy every time i'm putting on a piece of clothing that it, that allah is happy with that's an act of worship alhamdulillah remember an, our, our akhirah bank needs to be full up you know like we have a savings bank here we need to have a good deeds bank that we just constantly putting our good deeds in and there is a dua i leave it for you uh, so that inshallah on the slide so that you can take your time every time you wear a new garment make sure you read this dua allahumma lakal hamd oh allah all praises for you anta kaswatani you are the one who has clothed me ya rab so again you're bringing humbleness into yourself not that oh i worked hard i earned that money hence i'm putting on this garment no say ya rab thank you that's all praises for you is because of you i have been able to wear these clothes as aluka min khairihi i ask you from whatever good is in this in this outfit wa khairi ma suni'a lah 
and for good and the good for the, what it was made it you know for the good that it was made for i ask you for it and i seek your protection from the evil of it and from the evil of what it was made for you know like some garments are made for um, you know e even let's look into these rib jeans people are buying rib jeans 20 years ago we would think that this is a poor person yeah, this person can't afford to buy clothes and we would take pity on them. But now you will find that the rib jeans are much more expensive. And even those jeans, you know, the ones that have splashes of paint on them, you know, normally it would, you would just be amazed. How can people wear it? But people are wearing it because it has become a norm and everybody is wearing it. Now, that is why we ask Allah that, you know, Ya Allah, if, that was, if, if it was created for an evil purpose, then protect me from it. A beautiful dua. And this is for wearing a new garment. Okay. For new, every time you wear a new outfit, that's a dua you, you make. Then let's go on to the next ayah. Ya Bani Adam. Allah is again talking to us. Look, Allah is telling us. Ya Bani Adam. La yaftinan nakum. Yeah, oh, children of Adam, don't let the shaitan deceive you. Like he got your, your parents out of Jannah. Who are our parents? Adam and Hawa. So what happened? You know, do you know the story of Adam and Hawa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam with his, with his own hands. All of us are created by Allah saying be and we happened. Allah did not create us. Allah just said be and it happened. We were born. Okay. We, we came into existence. existence. But Adam alayhi salam, Allah created Adam with his own hands. And when Allah created Adam, of course, Adam was never a child. He was a, 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 an, an adult. And subhanAllah, you know that Iblis used to be with the company of the angels in the heavens because Iblis by nature is a jinn. But what happened is before the, uh, before the human beings came to live on planet earth, it was inhabited by the jinn. And what the jinn did is the jinn would, would fight, kill each other. They would murder people. They would lie. All sorts of evil that you see in the humans today was in the jinn at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angels down and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, destroy all of them. Allah asked the jinns to be destroyed. And when, when the angels came to destroy all the jinns, then shay, the shaitan, shaitan, the iblis, the main one, the Iblis, um, he came to the angels and he said, I'm going to fight my people with you all. No, I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to resist you all. I'm going to fight and I'm going to kill because my people have not been listening. And apparently he was the most pious of them all. All he did was the speak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all he used to do is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one who used to worship and the rest were involved in all bad things possible. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, all the jinns were killed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his status and asked him to come and sit with the angels in the heavens. So he was nowhere on earth. So then shaitan, Iblis, was living uh, on the in the heavens. And when he sees, when he sees the, the, you know, Adam being created, and Allah did not put the soul in Adam. So the template was created. The human body was there. But there was no ruh, okay? There was no ruh. So just the human body lying. And Iblis was so amazed and he, uh, he was wondering, what is this? And he went on to and tapped on it. And because we are made of clay, you know, and, and it, it was just a hollow body, so it, it made sound. So he was surprised. What is this? And then he went into, you know, through the nose and the, and the mouth, he went into and went around the body and, and tried to find out, but he couldn't know what it is. And then, of course, after that, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, asked the angels to bow down to Adam alayhi salam, and the bowing down was not to worship him, but to, uh, as a sign of respect. All the religions had this bowing down, except when Islam came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, nobody is allowed to bow down to any human being anymore. But before that, they would bow down as a sign of respect. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked all the angels to bow down and everybody to bow down. All the angels immediately bowed down to Adam alayhi salam, but the Iblis didn't. And, you know, it just proves, you know, you can be, uh, you know, he was, he was a great worshiper, but he did not follow the rules. You know, the, the, the test is as do as Allah says, don't question why. And that was the doom of him. So he refused and he said, I'm not going to worship, I'm not going to bow down to someone who's made of clay and I'm made of fire. I'm better than him. Again, arrogance. We don't, you know, arrogance destroys a person. And Allah got furious that when I say something you do, you don't question. And he, instead of apologizing, he took it on to himself to distract all, all the children of Adam and Adam himself. He has a vendetta against us. He hates us and he, he thinks that because of the human beings, he has, uh, you know, he's been set aside to the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately asked him to, uh, to go to hell. And he said, no, Ya Rab, if you give me time until the day of judgment. And Allah said, okay, you've been given time. And that also shows that if Allah can accept the dua of, of Iblis, then where do we stand? Of course, Allah is going to listen to our dua. He asked Allah for time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him time. Yeah, so then what happens is then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, and that is why yesterday I was teaching you shaitan ar rajim Yeah, shaitan, he's now far away from the mercy of Allah because he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not apologize. On the other hand, he was arguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then rajim cast away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast it, pelted him away. So um, what happens then is, uh, Ibrahim, Adam alayhi salam has been sent to Jannah. Now, of course, when they are in Jannah, and then Allah subhanahu wa taala made Hawa, uh, and Hawa and Adam uh, were living in Jannah, and Allah, of course, when uh, gave them the clothes of Jannah, so the beautiful clothes. But Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "You, you can do whatever you want in Jannah, except don't come near this tree." That was a test. That was a test. And lo and behold, what did the Shaitan do? Shaitan tricked them. Now, bear in mind, Adam alayhi salam is the first human being. He doesn't know the meaning of lying. Okay, He doesn't know the meaning of all these negative emotions that we go through. So he comes in and he tricks them. And he says, you know what, do you want to live forever? If, if I tell you, and he swore by Allah. So Adam alayhi salam could not believe. Of course, he understood that if someone is swearing by Allah, then surely they are truthful. So he said, I swear by Allah, if you eat the fruit of this tree, you're going to live forever and ever. And of course, they both ate. And what happened? They, in doing so, they disobeyed Allah. They had forgotten Allah had asked them not to eat. So then, and of course, it was all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. Allah knew what was going to happen. So, and, and, and as a result of disobedience, you know, like how when you're in military or anywhere you, you work, they offer you a uniform. And say, for example, you do something really bad. They court martial you and they ask you to take the uniform off, right? Because you no longer, you, you have done um, really bad that you don't, you don't deserve to wear that uniform. Same was here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stripped them of their clothing of Jannah. Yeah. And they had never seen each other without uh, without clothes. So they were just, you know, they were absolutely shocked that what has happened. And they just started picking up tree, the, the leaves of the tree to cover themselves. And this is what Allah is telling us that, oh, children of Adam, you know, because we don't know. But Allah is telling us, reminding us in the Quran, look, this has happened to your parents. He's there. He's out there to get you. Yeah. And this is what he's done. And this is the purpose of the shaitan. Shaitan is going to make sure that you strip your clothes. You expose your private parts. Yeah. And what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then saying? He can see you. Of course he can see us, isn't it? We can't see him, but he can see us. And Allah is telling us that he can see you and his soldiers. Means there's his, now you will ask me and you will, the question will come to your mind that then if all the, all the, all the jinn were killed, then how are the jinn around? But then Iblis then went on to have children, isn't it? And then each one of us has a jinn with us. Okay, so each human being that is born in the jinn is always, the jinn meaning the shaitan, the evil who gives us evil thoughts is there. So they can see us. So Allah is saying, look, humans, be warned. 
he can see you and his soldiers from the jinn or his tribe can see you, but you cannot see them. And then, inna ja'alna shayateen awliya lilladheena la yu'minun. Very strong ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, so for people who don't believe, Allah makes devils their protectors. So the devil is all the time telling them to do bad things. So for people who don't believe, they have a permanent shaitan who is all the time telling them, whispering in their ears to do something bad. So what do we learn? That we are trying, we will try and listen to the shayateen and, and understand that he and his soldiers can. So what can you do? What can you do? Every time you enter your house, make sure you put your right foot in and you say bismillah. If you say bismillah, then the shaitan cannot come in with you. But if you forget to say bismillah, then he comes with you, he, he, he is in your house. And then when you eat, for example, and you don't say Bismillah, so he's eating your food. And then when you go to bed and you don't dust your bed and you don't say, you don't say your du'as, he's in bed there. So, and that is why people are being, feeling miserable as they are, right? And they're not able to sleep properly because he's there poking and giving all the nightmares. He's doing his job. The thing is, we need to learn the Quran so we know what we're meant to be doing. Yeah. Every time you're changing clothes, make sure you say Bismillah. Then you, you know, suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a cover in front of their eyes. They can't see you. Um, I always tell a, a story that my teacher told me. There was a girl. Every time she went to the toilet, yeah, she would, you know, she would feel that someone has scratched her on her arms. And obviously she was quite a fashionable girl. She, would, she was not wearing any Islamic dress anyway. So to the point it came that she stopped going to the toilet. She would not. She would just find it too, you know, a torture for her. Her parents, uh, you know, they took her uh, to um, a scholar and, they, and the scholar said to them that, you know, you should recite the dua for going to the toilet. Okay. Then if you do that, you're protected from the jinn because they live in the toilets. They live in the dirty places. So that's why one thing that you need to do is please always close your bathroom door. Don't leave it open. Once you're finished with your business, close your door. Don't And always make sure your toilet seat is closed and always the toilet door is closed. Because in that, if you leave it open, you're just leaving, letting them come in your, in your rooms. So then this girl started doing that and alhamdulillah, it stopped. She would read, Allah mani a'udhu bika min al-khubithi wal Ya Allah, I seek a protection from the male and the female jinns. And then when you come out of the toilet, you say, you, you again thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you got rid of all the, the harmful things that were in your body. Okay, and uh, let's move on. So it was, I just told you the whole story. <clears throat> so Adam and Hawa ate. And uh, that shaitan and the jinn, they can see you and you cannot see them. So I just told you that as well, alhamdulillah, that you should read bismillah. Before you change your clothes, you should read a dua, or at least the minimum you can do is say bismillah. So before you change your clothes, make sure you say bismillah. And Allah is telling us, look, shaitan is our open enemy. So now be warned. You, you have been told that you have an enemy who can see you. You cannot see him. That's even more dangerous. Yeah. So what, what can we do? We need to seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly keep ourselves clean and keep ourselves uh, reciting du'as. Okay. So what are the lessons we learned? Clothing has a deep connection with modesty, humbleness. Haya has a deep connection with iman. So when you have clothing, meaning uh, you are dressed appropriately and you have shyness, then you have the, a portion of Iman in you. When a person dresses properly, it shows that their Iman is strong. And what does a shaitan do? He attacks us by the way of Haya, by telling us, oh no, you know, you're not going to look confident. People are going to look down on you. You're not going to fit in. And then he makes us do things that we lose our modesty. And, and lo losing our modesty is in turn losing our Iman. And when we lose our Iman, we just become very, very sad, extremely depressed, because you, you lose that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That hotline is, is, is messed up. Okay? Iman cannot go away unless Haya goes away. So it is so important, so important that we maintain Haya. There's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Iman, faith, has over 70 or over 60 branches. Okay, and modesty, that the key is modesty is a branch of faith. 
So having haya is a branch of faith. So you know when you when you are given a, a chance and you're having an argument, for example, and you you don't use abusive language, that is you being you being uh, shy. You have haya that you don't want to use these words because Allah is listening. When you go out, you don't uh, wear certain clothing because you know Allah is watching all the time. Okay, you don't involve in vain talk because you know Allah is watching. Okay. Then there's another surah in the Quran, Surah Al Ahzab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers. Now, some people are going to be arrogant and say, oh, this ayah is only for the wives and daughters of Rasulullah. But they forget to read this part. And the women of the believers. Aren't we the women of the believers? To wrap their outer garments, jilbab. Remember, jilbab is something that covers the whole body around themselves. That is more suitable. So they will be known as pious women. So you will not be, you know, people would not take you as a prostitute or something uh, and not be harassed by some people. So this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a believing woman should be dressed in a particular way. And why? To prevent one from becoming obsessed with pride in one's outward appearance. Because this is what is happening. We are becoming obsessed with how we look. And that, that is, we need to put a stop there. There's no harm in looking good. Don't get me wrong. There's no harm. But so much so that you're just, you know, I often tell my students, I say, you, you want to look good for the dustbin man? You want to look good for the man who's cleaning the streets? Is that, is that your standard? Ask yourselves. Because that's what, what we do. And when this surah, when this surah was revealed, then it was narrated from Safiya bin Shayba that Aisha anha, used to say, when these words were revealed and to draw their veils over their juyu bihinna, meaning their bodies, faces, and necks and chest, they took their, so all the women, so before that, there was no order for putting a cover on themselves. The women, they took a garment, whatever they were wearing, meaning the extra garment, they tore from them the edges and covered their faces with them. Okay, so now covering the face is an optional yeah option some because there's a difference of opinion and it's a valid difference of opinion that's a choice that you make but the idea is you need to cover your bodies necks and chest that's a that's a minimum face is an option okay some muslims wrongly believe that the hijab is a cultural practice yeah that is what people in in the uk the english people they think oh hijab is like coming from pakistan somewhere but it is not. It is a religious one. And we've just seen that. They're very much mistaken because Allah instructed the women to wear. Okay, look, there's another surah, surah to Nur. And what is Allah saying? And they are to draw their veils, humor, over their heads and chest. Juyub is chest. And not to reveal their beauty except to their husbands, their fathers, their husbands, fathers, their sons, their husbands, sons, their brothers, or their brothers' sons, or their sisters' sons. Okay, these are our, our relatives that you can, but mind you, that you have to take care that you are not going to dress up in a way uh, in front of your father in a provocative way or in front of your brothers. Okay, so the crucial words in, these, in this ayah is wal yadribna. Wal yadribna, the lamb that is present here is a command from Allah. In Arabic language, that's the lamb of command. So this is an order, it's not a choice. You know, people often conceive that to be a choice. No, choice is you want to cover your face or you don't want to cover your face. That you, you have a choice in that. But to cover your body, that is not a choice but a command. And if you're not doing it, you're sinning. Okay, and the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word veil the, the, for khimar. The meaning of this word in Arabic language is scarf or veil. Okay, and the jurists, what do they say? It is a cloth with which a woman covers her head. And al baghwi he says, juyub, singular jayb, this verse refers to, the, to their chests, hair, necks, and ears. All these need to be covered. All right. And Sheikh Uthaymin, he also says that the Quranic scholars have said it means they are to cover their heads, necks, chests with a scarf. All right, Allah instructed now, you know, don't be, you know, feeling sad. Everything is for the woman. 
No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed the man as well. In Surah An-Nur, Allah first instructs the man to lower their gaze from looking at women with desire other than their wives and protect themselves from fornication. This is pure, pure for them. So a man has been instructed first by Allah, lower down your gaze. Yeah, men are commanded to dress modestly in loose garments. I've just spoken about it. Yeah, and there's one thing that I want you to uh, look into that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you need to, you, your lower garment for the men should be above the ankles. Why? Look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. What is below the ankles of a lower garment will be in the fire. Subhanallah. You know, um, people make fun of, of those men or boys who wear um, trousers above their ankles. Little do they know that they are actually saving themselves from fire. And we are putting ourselves into punishment when we're making fun of them, okay? But the lady should be covering her feet, okay? The lady should cover her feet, but then again, I'll, I'll speak to you about how long should be the garment of the woman. But a man, they should expose their ankles. The lower garment of the believer should be, should come to the mid calf. This is a man, okay? But there is no sin on him if it comes to the point, uh, to that point and the ankle. So, but whatever is lower than the ankle is going to be in the fire. And he said that three times. Rasulullah said it three times. Allah will not look at the one who lets his lower garment drag on the floor out of vanity. Now, this is going to be for both. Allah will not look at the one who lets their garment drag. You know, these days you have all these princesses getting married and the and they have the, the, the veil that goes long and all these long dresses and the veils dragging. Alhamdulillah, look. It says that Allah will not look at that person. And they're doing it out of vanity. Oh, they are. They're not doing it because of need. So may Allah protect us. And if we have done it, may Allah forgive us. So what is the Islamic etiquette? What Islamic etiquette includes separating unrelated men. Now, you have relations that you can never marry. There are men that you can never, ever, ever marry. And we've just read who are they. Uh, so the unrelated men and women in social gatherings, they should be separated as much as possible. Yeah. In mosques, alhamdulillah, we know that there are separate entrances, separate prayer rooms, separate rooms in social gatherings. Yeah. Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, beware of entering upon women folk or upon the gatherings of women. Yeah, clear, clear instruction. And, you know, we've forgotten that. We have forgotten that. And we have just... You know, we are living where men, you know, just, they just walk in without knocking and, and they, they don't even seek permission. And the, the women, they're at home, they're in a relaxed way. They don't have their scarf on and they just come in. Where's the Islamic manners? We have all the English manners possible, but where, where is our Islamic manners? Okay, so what are the rules, Islamic rules for modest dress from Quran and Sunnah for men? Let's go through them again. Clothing should conceal everything between the navel and the knee. So not at all should you expose your navel and knee. It should be loose, not see-through. Okay. Uh, garments must be above the ankle bone. It should not resemble the clothing of women. You see? You see that these days that people are all having all those thoughts about, I feel that I am a born in the boy. I, am a, I have a body of a boy, but the thinking of a woman. All, all this, all shaitan playing a biggest role. Yeah? Um, and that is the reason, you know, men should not wear anything made of silk. It cannot be of silk. Yeah, this is the reason. When you start giving men wearing silk clothes, then they start getting feminine characteristics in them. Yeah. And they should not resemble something that merely seeks to imitate un-Islamic practices or fashion. Should not imitate the Buddhists, the priests, the rabbis, hip hop artists, movie stars. And sadly, we all have, we have seen the cases where people are, where you know they want to wear like the celebrities wear then you you become who you follow isn't it you become who you love and it cannot be made of silk a man's garment cannot be made of silk and cannot be colored with saffron saffron is you know the color of saffron the orangish color is not allowed in islam for men all right conditions of jilbab so you're going to buy a jilbab Okay, so what is the conditions of your jilbab going to be? Now, don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I loved this uh, picture and all the conditions that had. Don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting you to cover your face from day one. No, 
but I'm just trying to tell you, so at least you're informed and you make dua that Allah gives you the ability to wear the jilbab in a way that he's pleased, okay? We take little baby steps. We don't take just from zero to hundred. We don't reach there. We take small steps, but at least we are familiar. It covers your whole body, you see, from head to toe, yeah? Or her, her feet are covered and it is not an adornment. So you're not buying some exclusive designer abaya that it, you know, abaya is meant to detract people from you, not attract people from you. So your abaya should not be such that, oh, people say, wow, I really like your abaya. It has all the sequence and everything. No, that's meant to be your inner clothes. Yeah, abaya is like a cover on you. You don't want people looking at you. It is thick and trans, not transparent, transparent, okay? It's loose and not tight, especially the fabric. These days, subhanAllah, they are getting fabrics in abaya that, is, that sticks to your body. It clearly defines the bones of the body. And you cannot do that. It's not allowed in Islam to wear clothing that, you know, you can know the structure of a woman. It, is, it should not be fragranced. Your abaya should not be fragranced or perfumed. It should not resemble the clothing of men. It should not resemble the clothing of disbelieving women. And you should not wear it for fame. You should not wear it to impress or show off people. Believe me, the number of designer abaya shops that have been opened. And I often ask myself, is this the purpose of an abaya? And people are flocking, flocking, you know, to get those abayas. It is norm in, you know, I, like I said to you, I live in London and I see that 200 pounds, 300 pounds abaya, normal. And I'm just amazed. It is nothing, but it's just fancy. Nothing to do with what we are talking about. And I tell them, I tell them, don't call it abaya. Call it a dress. Say you're selling a dress. Don't say you're selling an abaya. Um, so what is hijab? Again, it is, you know, people think that it is a headscarf only. But remember what we said? It, is, it means a screen or a cover. Khimar is the word, yeah? Uh, a khimar is a scarf which is worn over the head, the shoulders, and the chest of a woman. Okay. Jilbab is the outer garment, and it covers her from head to her feet. Okay, this is uh, important, and and it can be one piece or two piece, and she can uh, and she puts it on before leaving her home when in the company of non mahram Sorry, that's a mistake over there. In the company of non mahrams Okay. So what is the hadith? How do I know this? The Prophet Sallallahu said, when a woman reaches the age of adolescence, it is not correct that she displays any part of her body except this and this. Point, and he pointed to his face and hands. Okay. So except the face and hands, everything should be covered. So you need to ask yourself, have you reached the age of adolescence? If you have, then the order is for you. You have an obligation to cover yourself and cover your whole body, okay? And the rules of modesty are not, are, are not legislated by the state of Pakistan or India or Bangladesh. No, this is from Allah. And it is not dictated by the desires of the people. And look at this, this is to do with the perfume. Musa ibn Yasar said, a woman passed by Abu Huraira and she had perfume on, yeah? She, her scent, her fragrance was overpowering. He said, oh, female slave of Al-Jabbar, are you going to the mosque? She said, yes. He said, and have you put on a perfume because of that? Because she, you know, her intention was not bad. Her intention wasn't to attract the men, but she was going to the house of Allah. So she had put on a perfume, which was quite strong. Yeah. So she said, yes. He said, go back and wash yourself, meaning have a shower. For I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, if a woman comes out to the mosque and her, her fragrance is overpowering, Allah will not accept any prayer from her until she goes home and washes herself. Very profound, very, very profound. If you are that keen uh, and, and you're sensitive, make sure you have some perfume with you. You come in the mosque, yeah, and then you put it on, but not in the way. People are passing by and if they smell, so if, if the fragrance reaches a man, then you're in trouble. That's a bad deed written for you. A man who is not your mahram. Yeah. And look, this, this woman is going to the mosque to earn good deed, but her prayer is not going to be accepted. Yeah. It's okay. You can do it at home. If you are going to, to pray at home, you perfume yourself, perfectly fine. 
But you know why? Because if you're going to put on a perfume, there's men standing there. They're going to get distracted from their prayer. So you distracted the men, basically, isn't it? You, 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 you created unwanted attention. Yes, perfume, not on women. We're talking about women's perfume. Men, perfectly fine. Men can put on a perfume. But it's the women when they're going to the mosque or when they're going out anywhere, they don't put on. So they have to have a light fragrance with them. And then when, you know, for example, you're going to a party where there's only going to be women, keep the perfume with you. Keep the perfume with you. And when you reach there, then put it on and it will wear off by the time you finish your, uh, your gathering. Okay. Subhanallah. This is a very strong hadith. It was reported that Prophet wasallam said, there are two types of people. There are two types of the people of hell that I have not seen yet. Men with whips, like the tails of cattle, with which they strike the people, and women who are clothed yet naked, walking with an enticing gait, meaning their walk is very enticing, with something on their heads that look like the humps of camels, leaning to one side, they will never enter paradise or even smell its fragrance, although its fragrance can be detected from such and such distance, meaning that the, the, the fragrance of Jannah can be uh, detected from a distance of uh, 500 years. And these women will not be allowed to enter Jannah. They'll never enter Jannah. Auzubillah, so strong hadith, extremely strong. And you know, when you talk about enticing gate, look at Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he's explaining, walking with an enticing gate. I want you all to think about the catwalks girls do, the models do. Yeah, enticing walk. And look at that, they lean to the side. That's what is happening, isn't it? Subhanallah. So what have the scholars said? That regarded the appearance of these two types as one of the minor signs of the hour meaning the day of judgment will not come until these two things happen. These are one of the minor signs of the day of judgment. Men with whips, like, like the tails of cattle, what is meant is that those who strike people for no legitimate reason, like the oppressive police or others, whether that is on the orders of the state or otherwise, meaning these people are cruel. Yeah, They oppress people. They strike, and you must have seen, you know, you, all of you have fe felt, what is the police doing? You know, sometimes for no reason, they just attack people. They strike people. And Nabawi, he said, with regards to those who would have whips, they are those who work for the police. And as Shaukani said, they are the helpers of the oppressors. And usually it refers to the worst group around the ruler. You know, there's always a group of, uh, around the rulers of the country where they're giving the, the ruler all the bad um, advice just so that he can remain in power. So, you know, you, I mean, I don't have to say much. You know, you know what is happening and you understand completely. It may also apply to unjust rulers. And subhanAllah, this is the sign of the hour. And don't we see that happening? And it just tells us how Nabi Sallam is a true prophet. Allah told him and he told us and this is happening in front of our eyes and we've lived to witness all this we've lived to witness what the police do unjustly to the people yeah look at the next one the second type is what these are people Nabi Sallallahu had never seen and he told us that there will come a time when there will be this type of people second type women who are clothed yet naked Walking with an enticing gait, with something on their heads that looks like the humps of camels, leaning to one side. I want you to take a moment and, and again reflect on this. Have you seen these type of women? Yes. I, you know, if you ever watch, um, what's that? Oscar. Oscar, the, the, whenever they have the, the Oscar prize giving out and, and everything, what happens? And I often think these celebrities, they have so much money. And all they want to do is expose themselves. They have the, you know, they may have a garment, but they, the whole purpose is showing their body off. And sadly, the Muslim celebrities are doing the same. So they are clothed, yet naked. And they try and walk with an enticing gait. And they have humps of the camel. Now, how many of us know about hijabis having humps? Like, like you know, they have, they have scarf done up in such a way that they are humps of the camel. Anabawi said that the meaning of this translated clothes yet naked means 
they will uncover part of their bodies to show their beauty. Subhanallah, don't they do that? So they will be clothed yet naked. And it was said that they will wear thin clothes and we know that is happening. It's summer, a'udhu billah, with the lockdown finishing in our, in our place, that's again going to be nakedness all over. Wear thin clothes, which shows what is beneath them. So they will be clothed yet virtually naked. With regards to the phrase here as walking with an enticing gait, it, it was said that it means deviating from the obedience to Allah, from the commandments to guard their chastity. Yeah. And then they, what do they do? Not only they don't stop there, they teach others as well what to do. And it was said that ma'ilat means walking with an enticing gait and mu'milat meaning moving their shoulders. This is all to do with catwalk really. And it was, it was said that it means that they're trying to tempt men by showing their adornments. The whole point is that, isn't it? It is to uh, attract the males. The whole purpose is attracting the males. Okay. With regards to the phrase translated here as with something on the heads like the humps of the camel, this may mean that they would make their heads look bigger with veils and turbans, which are wrapped around their head. So it looks like the humps of the camel. Right. So Al-Mazhari said that it may be what is meant is they will not lower their gaze in the presence of men. Rather, they will look directly. They will look directly at them. OK, so, you know, these people, when they were doing the interpretations, little did they know that we have seen in our times women having turbans and having uh, scars with the hump of a camel. But also it means that they don't lower their gaze. And you know that they don't. These days, <clears throat> rarely, you know, it, it, before people would, you know, on the wedding day, you would see that the bride would be a bit shy. Now you will see that the, 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 the groom is shy. The, the bride is not at all shy. They don't show any, any remote, remotely any sign of any shyness. And they think that is good. And I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I would not. Because that is, you know, where's your shyness? Sheikh Uthaymin said the, phra the phrase ye clothed yet naked has been interpreted to mean that they wear short clothes. They do not cover their aura that, that must be covered. And it has been interpreted as a meaning that they wear light and thin clothes and they do not prevent others from seeing the women's skin underneath, meaning those clothes don't prevent the skin seen. And we know this. I, I don't even have to say, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we need to. We, we, we need to avoid this. You know, you need to ask yourself every time you stand at the door when you're walking out, ask yourself these questions. Am I that woman? Am I that, we don't, we don't need to point fingers at others. Let me just make myself because I'm gonna go to my own grave. Once I am, I am done with myself, I have perfected myself, then I am going to try and bring other people into what I have learned. But instead of pointing fingers at others, let's try and improve ourselves. So it has been interpreted as meaning that they Okay, alhamdulillah, sorry about that. <clears throat> so this is a beautiful excerpt. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry, the internet had just gone. So alhamdulillah, I hope you can hear. Um, this is, uh, I'll leave it for you to read in your own time. But we live in a society where we are worried about uh, what other people think, yeah? And a Muslim woman is con considered oppressed. You know, I, I want you to think on the flip side of it. Uh, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not actually oppressed, but actually she's the one who is more, uh, you know, she, the oppressed people are the ones who are oppressed to the 
to the to the desires of the society. Society wants them to do, to to wear certain clothes, to look the certain way, uh, to behave in a certain way. Uh, you know, because some jobs in the city, for example, they will not give a job to um, uh, to a woman who is wearing uh, not wearing certain type of clothes, for example. But you know what? We need to tell ourselves, Allah subhanahu wa taala is raziq. Allah is the one who provides. Don't you ever think that Allah, you will Allah will leave you and will not you'll not be able to get a job because you are wearing an Islamic dress or you wear you 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 fail to give in to you know wearing the short skirts that are above the knee the pencil skirts you don't do that um, and and Allah will not leave you in vain for sure Allah will 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 provide for you inshallah so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to I'm going to ask you to give me the answers in the chat box about what we've learned. I'm gonna show you a series of pictures. And now you tell me based on the hadith that we have done, uh, which one, what is wrong? Okay, this one is the, the correct hijab is the khimar. Okay, this is, this is perfectly fine. Either of it, either of it is perfectly fine. Yeah, no camel hump. You can, you, like I said, but if you're wearing something like this, that's perfectly fine. You have been given the options. So this is, long and covering till the toes okay now let's so this is something i wanted to say to you is you know no matter what stage you're on in your journey to wear the hijab okay? wherever you are in your journey to wear the hijab it is the trying that counts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you're going through Allah knows what you're going through and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you for your trying. Okay, now look at this. Now I want you to tell me, we've just done the hadith. We've just done the hadith about um, uh, the clothing that you wear. Now this abaya, this abaya is costing 11.7 million pounds. And this was in 2000. This was in 2007, 13, sorry. And there is a diamond, you see that? You see that red diamond? That red diamond was is itself costing 4.6 million pounds. Okay. Now you tell me in the chat box. Yes, I'm sorry. There's someone who's trying to call and I'm, I'm just not able to understand. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. The sound is distracting. Okay. Now, very quickly, what is what is wrong here? This this abaya is 11.7. This abaya is 11.7 million pounds. What is wrong with it? It is not modest. Okay, well, it's covering. She's not wearing the scarf. Yes, but look at. We said um, it should not. It, why is she wearing it? To attract people, isn't it? So the, the, the clothing should not be so that, yes, attractive. And she is wearing it to be famous. So you don't, you don't seek fame. Yeah, you don't seek fame. You don't want people to say, wow, she wears a beautiful abaya. Your whole purpose was you. Okay, hijabi brides. Are they good? What's wrong? They apparently they are practicing Islam. What do you think? What do you think is happening here? Is it correct? Okay, it's jazzy. Yes, it's showing off. It, it is. Is it Islam? You know, you've learned about everything. Do you think it is? You know, if she, if she is, you know, but she's got the pictures. I got these pictures of the net. Yeah. So if she was you know, excluded, and she's saying, I'm only going to go to a female gathering. I'm not going to have a cameraman or a camera woman there, and no man is going to be allowed. That was fine. But with all the extravagance that she's doing, she's around, who have taken pictures, she should have a veil. If she is no harm, she can dress up. She should have a veil that completely covers her. This is exposing her body exactly know the shape of her body okay this is a dress that you should be wearing and you should aspire to wear too okay 
Now tell me, what is the problem here? They're all beautiful women. And what are they not following? Um, are they going to get the reward of, you can't see it on camel hump? Hump on the head, good, very good. Okay, these two have hump on the head. What about this? Which part should be exposed? Should it be exposed? The, the hoops, the, the earrings and the neck? Yeah, that's another thing. What is the problem here? What's the problem here? Remember we said she cannot show the, uh, and, and there's something else, look at her ankle, ankle exposed. And then she's showing her the shape of her legs. Okay. What's the problem here? Someone wearing a niqab, too tight, good. And that was too tight here, niqab. Yes, she was wearing niqab, yes, by all means, but look at what she's doing then. She's making the eyes so attractive that these people are just show, uh, yeah. Yes, hair is showing, good. You don't wear scarf in a way. And look at that, ears showing, the hoops showing, the neck showing, and especially these days with the turbans. Yeah, exactly. The, tur the eye that, That's another topic for some other day, inshallah. Yeah, heavy makeup, good. Uh, you know, by the way, just, just so you know, eyebrows, threading of the eyebrows is haram. You cannot do that. Allah curses such type of women who get the eyebrows done. Um, yes. Yes, the point of the niqab is not to uh, attract. Okay. What is happening here? And honestly, I'm amazed. I'm amazed how people can wear a skirt and then they have a scarf on top. What's the problem here? Right to me the... Yes, body fitting, clothes. Yes, this is body fitting. Yes, it, it defines her shape. What else? Yes, hair can be seen. Okay, what else? Ankles are exposed. That was, I was That's what my aim was. Well done. And look at this. Her, her, her bone structure can be seen. Your bone structure should not be seen. Okay, good. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? I know a lot of people think as long as she has a hijab on, look at that, it defeats the purpose. Clearly it's haram. Man and women, they cannot show their thighs. You can see her thigh perfectly well. You can see the shape of her thigh. Yeah. Yes, heels that make sound, definitely. Definitely heels that make sound, the haram. Look at that. It's so common. Uh, Subhanallah, it's gone opposite now. I wanted to look for pictures of trousers because now girls' trousers, you don't find them to the proper length. They're always three quarters. And, and the ankles are seen, yes. So apparently she's, uh, you know, people would say, wow, she's a hijabi. But is she? Is she really? Is she really obeying Allah's order? Yeah, she's not. And neither is she. You know, she's just got, she, it's, not a, it's not a khimar then. It's just a piece of cloth that she's put on her head. Because she's trying to do fashion there. Look at the neck. Neck is also being exposed. Okay, what's the problem here? I have put crosses, but what's the problem here? Go on, tell me what's the problems in all of them. Look at this. It's going up to her ankle. Her ankle is not exposed, but what's the problem? Too tight. Well done. Look at this. You know, subhanAllah, look at the scarf. Remember we said it should cover the chest? It's covering the chest? No, it's not. Yeah? And look at this. I don't know. I don't know what, which type of clothing. What are people thinking? That your bone structure, exactly, your bone structure should not be made clear. You know, People can know exactly uh, about your figure, which you should not. Okay? So Alhamdulillah, all of you understood. Yeah, so dear sisters, hijab is much more than that. Yeah, look at this picture. Covering your hair also means covering your modesty. Yeah, and you dress to please Allah, not to please his creation. And I, I came across, sorry, I, had, I wanted to put a picture that you know yourself, not wrap yourself. Yeah, you're not, you know, like people use, they wrap like a cling film, they do. But you should not wrap yourself, but cover yourself. Okay, alhamdulillah. Now, something, uh, uh, something to note for you. Don't, don't tell me, where do you grade yourself? Where are you? What stage are you in covering your aura? Are you at stage one or are you at stage eight? Yeah, yeah. And look at the arrows that says, as you go up and up the stage, you're pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you go down and down the stage, you're pleasing the shaitan. MashaAllah, most of you are in eight. MashaAllah, may Allah bless it for you. Stage six, well done. May Allah, may Allah give you the ability to go up to, I'm eight, MashaAllah. Excellent, I'm seven. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Well done, well done. So I have taken quite a lot of your time. Sorry about that.
the topic was long and it needed to be addressed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you and me and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to act on, on, um, on his teachings, on the orders that he gives us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your time and bless you all um, with beneficial knowledge. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Um, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka 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 wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Colorful hijab, my dear, try and avoid. If you want to wear, wear dark color hijabs. Um, again, the purpose is we don't want to be causing attraction. Okay? We're trying to uh, detract people. Um, so all those sparkly and dangly hijabs, no. Try and, and uh, I don't know what is your question, Sheikh, Sheikh Ayan Suhail. You said answer your question, but I don't know what your question is. Hijab or scarf, yeah. Hijab or scarf, it's the same, isn't it? We just learned that scar, hijab is used, it is, hijab means a cover, and khimar is the word. But it's okay, people understand. Um, can you wear light tech material? But not, yeah, of course, if it is, yes, of course, if it is not see-through, then you can, of course. Yes, uh, I, I heard about short burqas. Why would you wear short burqa? I don't understand. Why would you expose the, 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 the lower calf? And try and avoid that because... Yes, once I saw the bleeding, can I, can I fast? Yes, of course you can. If your cycle has gone, yes. I know. Uh, may Allah make it easy for Sri Lanka. They are putting a, you know, a difficult time to the Muslims in Sri Lanka. And you know, may Allah allow us to act. You know, we living in countries where we are allowed to practice our religion. We, we, need, we don't need to take it for this for granted, but instead ask Allah to, you know, to, to bless it for us and be happy. Alhamdulillah. And may Allah make it easy for you all sisters in Sri Lanka. It's not easy. Yes, don't, don't, don't. That's the, that's the point. Good question. That can you, can you tie in a bun? Yes, you can tie in a bun, but don't raise the bun up. That looks like the hump of a camel. Yeah. Yeah, colorful, that's fine. But as long as the colors are not bright colors. Yes, you're supposed to hide your feet in salah. You, you need to do that. Um, mashallah, you're number eight. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Under 10, yes, you, look, wearing jeans is not haram, but make sure you cover on top, yeah? And don't wear tight, tight, tight jeans that exposes every part of your body. Um, but, um, you, 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 and when you go out of your house, you put your abaya on. Yes, you are supposed to hide your feet when uh, praying. I know, may Allah have mercy on the people in France. You know, Allah Akbar, I know you're going through a terrible time. You know, I can only make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you means that you move from that country and go and settle somewhere else. Uh, yes, we can wear jeans at home in front of mahrams, not allowed in front of non-mahrams, that's correct. Um, yes, you can wear socks and drag. You know, the, the dragging of the dress is not meant to be, you know, the long, 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 completely long dress, but relatively that covers your feet. Have a separate abaya for prayer. Yes, you can do that. In, with your husband, you can wear, no, that's fine. You can wear your pajamas. Okay, alhamdulillah. All right, then let's finish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Niqab is not compulsory. Yeah, we should, should we wear compulsory? You know, it's a choice you, you have been given. Yes, it is more recommended to wear the niqab. It is recommended. And with coronavirus, nearly everybody's wearing a niqab now. Subhanallah. Okay, inshallah. All right. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta samir alim. Assalamu alaikum.